Our Lord Jesus is described as follows, quote, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. All your garments are scented with myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces by which they have made you glad. Psalm 45, verses 7 and 8. Here we have both the perfumed holy anointing oil and the sacred incense of the sanctuary. Surely, the God who made us with the ability to enjoy at the same time the aroma of good cooking and the perfume of flowers on the table would know how to blend two complementary fragrances. The most valuable perfume in the world, I'm told, is a diamond and pearl encrusted vial of Shamuk perfume by Spirit of Dubai, priced at almost $1.3 million. But that's mostly in the packaging. Jean Patou's Joy sells for a whopping $1,800 since it's made from 10,600 jasmine flowers and 28 dozen roses per bottle. But this perfume, God held the license on it, and it was a capital offense to use it for any purpose other than, quote, the tabernacle of meeting and the ark of the testimony, the table and all its utensils, the lampstand and its utensils, and the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the laver and its base, and Aaron and his sons. Exodus 30, verses 26 to 30. With the base of five quarts of olive oil, which Adam Clark says, quote, is supposed to be the best preservative of odors, it was compounded according to the art of the perfumer, verse 25, out of myrrh, cinnamon, cassia, and calamus. Notice that the place and the people who served there would have the same fragrance. Any priest walking among the people would silently but surely show he had been in the holy place. You don't suppose that happens now? Listen, quote, God through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. 2 Corinthians 2, verses 14 and 15. May people catch the delightful aroma of the perfume of his gladness from our lives today. But there was not only the anointing perfumed oil. God also instructed Moses, quote, take sweet spices, stacti and onkia and galbanum, and pure frankincense with these sweet spices. There shall be equal amounts of each. You shall make of these an incense. Exodus 30, verses 34 and 35. The aroma from this would be decidedly different from the anointing perfume. Yet both were designed by the Lord to expend their substance for the blessing of others. Is this Paul's idea when he wrote, quote, walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma, Ephesians 5.2. The first time we hear of this, Noah made a sacrifice after the flood, quote, and the Lord smelled a sweet savor, Genesis 8:21, where the words could be translated, a savor of rest. Christ's sufferings are pictured when we read, quote, you shall beat some of it very fine, Exodus 30, 36. Aaron was, quote, to take a censer full of burning coals off of fire from the altar before the Lord with his hands full of sweet incense, beaten fine, and bring it inside the veil. Leviticus 16, 12. Can you see the two on the Emmaus road when, quote, 
Jesus himself drew near and went with them, Luke 24, 15. How disheartened they were. But then the high priest placed incense beaten fine on the censers of their hearts. Quote, Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory, he said, and, quote, expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself, verses 26 and 27, quote, and they said, did not our heart burn within us while he opened the scriptures to us, verse 32. This is true worship. <laughs> 